Wisconsin. How you doing? Right. I, uh, all the other panels that we do, we do uh, the panels for uh, Wizard World all over the country. And uh, I always start off like, hey, Portland. I was not going to say, hey, Wisconsin, because I know that uh, that's that 70s show and we probably get sued. <laughs> so, uh, I, you guys doing okay? Enjoying the con? Yeah. All right. So we all know why we're here. Um, so just a real brief, uh, brief introduction. I am Jeff Greenwald. I am the head writer of Rabbit Ears. Uh, for those of you uh, who haven't met us out on the floor, uh, Rabbit Ears is a show very much like Mystery Science Theater. Uh, but we're here to talk about Mystery Science. Uh, with me uh, today on our panel is, also from Rabbit Ears, one of the writers, Matthew Rose. Hi. Thanks for coming. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's uh, fantastic to have you guys here. My name is Matthew Rose. I am a writer for the show, and uh, I'm also a producer for the past uh, three seasons. And, oh, yeah. Uh, right? You want to, whoops. That's good to mention, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and he makes props. Anyway. He, he, he can fire me. The show comes every once in a while. Uh, I, 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 do, I do indeed make props, which is uh, one of uh, the many things I enjoy about the show. And also, I was, uh, I was a hobo in one of the scenes. That's true. He did play a hobo. I did. I did. It was good. And uh, Dylan Gregory, who is also a writer on the show. And, uh, and has a fan club. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! So uh, we're here to talk about MST, and we're going to start off just talking about our favorite uh, Mystery Science Theater episodes. So uh, I'm going to go sit down here, but uh, uh, who wants uh, to tell us about uh, their favorite Mystery Science episode? Yeah, uh, we'll start with you. <laughs> Closest to us. Um, little Johnny Goes to the Fair. Oh, Little Johnny Goes to the Fair. Now that was, um, that's a short. Uh, but it was an amazing short, and, uh, well, why? Give me, a, give me an example. Get me out of here. Attica, Attica. <laughs> <laughs> the line I remember the most from that short is, uh, the narrator says, and now for some real fun, and they go, so they leave the fair. <laughs> so, yeah, no, there was a hand over here. I'll do you in front first. The warrior of the lost world is much better than the warrior of the lonely heart. <laughs> yes. Well, wow. So you, you, you tackled my second question, which was why. You gave us why already. That's why. So that's a big question. Mega weapon, mega weapon, mega weapon. Yes. <laughs> and close tie is Mitchell. Mitchell. Oh, Mitchell. Mitchell. Okay, I'm going to pretend you didn't say Mitchell because I'm going to say that later. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Dylan, what's yours? Uh, Santa Claus vs. the Martians. Yes! First one I watched, and just the idea and premise of Santa Claus vs. the Martians was something I had to turn on right away. And there were some ridiculous characters like Bapo and it, fantastic stuff. I also want to point out that this really is his favorite, because when we go across the country, we kind of gauge, like, if, if, if someone says one that we normally say, we can't say it, he says it every time. It doesn't matter if one of you guys say Santa Claus vs. he's like, oh yeah, me too, that's it, I'm done. Drop the mic. Okay, that's my favorite, and Bapo, and we're done. So, uh, uh, and, uh, so what, uh, yeah. Space Mutant. Okay. Oh, Space is amazing. Okay, all right. <laughs> so you hit, one of, you hit one of mine, so I will, uh, why Space Mutant? I need to give that dead woman another chance, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good yes, that Good is luck, exactly man. what I, so for those of you that don't know Space Mutant, who, uh, I'm not going to ask, but if you don't know Space Mutant, go look it up. Um, Space Mutiny is like this 70s Battlestar Galactica like movie, but bad, and everyone, the good guys and the bad guys are on the same ship, right? They're on the same ship, but you don't really understand why it doesn't make sense. Uh, and everyone's really oily, and there's no handrails. Like, they kept mentioning that. Everyone keeps falling off things, and they're like, why don't they just have handrails? Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a scene where one of the... Um, crew members dies, and they're in the next scene, like in the background. And that's what he's referring to. So, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, someone else? In the blue, back there, way back. Um, it, was in the, it was the general hospital short right before the beat next episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do remember that. And what uh, the general hot for those of you who didn't hear, the general hospital short uh, right before beat uh, And by the way, I love beat next, too. So they, um, but... Uh, the only thing I remember about that short was, holy crap, that show's been on a long time. Uh, because it was just the dawn of television, and it's like General Hospital, and it was 
Uh, but why? I don't remember much else about that short. So why, why that one? There's a scene where they bring out a cake and then the phone rings and they pick up the phone and Pro goes, "Yeah, this is Jeff from Props. Yeah, don't eat the cake." <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Matthew, yours. Uh, Santa Claus version. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I reset that one. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I'm alone in this, but uh, Red Zone Cuba. Anybody like that one? Look how quiet it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're like sheepish about it. Like, I do like that one. Yeah. I hate that one episode. There's only one MSD I think I can't sit through, and that's it. We should watch it together. No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Red Zone Cuba, I love it. The, uh, the song comes on early on. It's written, written uh, and performed uh, and directed by the same guy. He just thought he'd make a buddy movie about kind of committing So that's not a Roger Corman movie, it's someone else? It's someone else. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, they, it starts off with a Night Train song. To me. Night Train. You can't tell where he's going. <laughs> it's Night Train. <laughs> and uh, remember uh, Michael J. Nelson just going, God, to be blessed with an instrument like that. <laughs> wow. I don't like that one. That one's really hard to sit through. They're driving around the desert. For a long time, I mean, this is like Manos, the hands of face esque, <laughs> right? But it's 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 they, somehow worse. They somehow managed to make that. There's some mismanagement in the movie too. They were going to do an airplane escape. Um, they really they couldn't like get the cameraman and the extra film and everything into the plane, and so it just has them taking off, and then suddenly they're at the at the new uh, destination. Right, right. right. It's uh, Red Zone Cuba. If you really want to test your bravery, check that one out. Um, and know that you outdid me because I can't do that one. Uh, others, uh, right there. Yeah. My favorite is Jack Frost. Jack Frost. And I loved it from the beginning. The line that won me over was um, with the main character. He says, I've never sat on a shuffle before. And then Tom says, The flight of the loose. <laughs> Jack, Jack Frost, that's one that people don't bring up much. I love that one. Um, wow. Uh, I can't think of a specific example, but you did a, you did a good job. Uh, over here on the far, yeah. Um, I like the scene, Circus on Ice, short before Monster Go Go. <laughs> circus on Ice, short before Monster Go Go. And why is that? And you vomit sprays out, and it's technically green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, uh, the Circus Short, um, what, what, a circus comes to town, I think is what it's called. Or, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's a circus comes to town, but yeah. And all the freaky clowns. That's what I remember. It's like He loves clowns, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, send him clowns. Oh, yeah. The freaky clowns. Just these clowns. Yeah. I, I like the Mr. Science Theater movie. Yes. The Silent Earth. And I like, they did an episode where it was like a teddy bear. And it's stuff like Teddy Ruxpin snapped. <laughs> I don't know what episode that was. And there was one where they were swapping the deck and they said something like, it's closing time at Hooters or something. <laughs> Again, I don't remember it's been years, but the movie. I don't remember that at all. The Mystery Science Theater movie is great. This Island Earth. Yeah, This Island Earth. It's, and it's a good movie. I mean, it's a cheesy sci fi movie, but it is a good movie. And that's one thing that like, inspired me. I said, oh my gosh, you could actually still take a decent movie and, and riff it and make a whole new animal. Not, I don't want to say better it because it's right. different. In our show, uh, we did, uh, we did uh, Charade. Uh, with uh, Carrie Grant and Audrey Hepburn. So is this that guy's heart monitor? Wait a second. This movie has actual stars in it? Are you complaining? Well, no, but it does seem odd. And everyone said, oh, you can't do charade. It's a good movie. And I said, that was sort of one of the things I thought yeah, about. Accepted. Was Yeah, exactly. And, we, and I think we did, I think we did a, 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 a good job, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, it was a challenge, but it makes it different. Uh, I wouldn't say better, but yeah, exactly. Mystery Science Theater movie. Yeah. Um, giant Spider Invasion. Giant Spider Invasion. Nice. Why? Um, well, it, they, when they start screaming, Packers win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Packer! In Rift Tracks, we'll talk about Rift Tracks briefly, but in, later, in, in Rift Tracks, uh, the Star Wars one, uh, the Star Wars Rift Tracks, when the Sandman comes up and he's waving this, this stiff, you know, uh, uh, at Luke, they're all Packers! And I always laugh at that. That was always really funny. Uh, my favorite MST is, uh, well, that we haven't said, and I'm not going to say Mitchell, but you, you got Mitchell in there. Uh, Mitchell's awesome. Uh, but uh, is uh, probably Side Hackers. Uh, it's an early one, so if you don't know this one, uh, it's a Joel episode, uh, but Side Hackers. The plot is about these guys who ride these uh, sidecar tandem motorcycles in races. 
just that's enough, right? I mean, like, you got the motorcycle guy, but then there has to be a guy in the side car, and then they all race. Um, so, you uh, the side. Right, exactly. Um, but my science. The reason why I love it is there's a scene where, like, this the romantic couple are, like, out in a field, and they start kissing, and they sit down in the grass, and everything starts getting blurry, and they say, the grass is dropped. And then, like, throughout the whole, like, lovemaking scene, it keeps getting blurry, and they keep talking about how they're getting higher and higher, and <laughs> getting them high. So I, I love that, that. I love that. Um, so are you guys ready to watch a really crappy movie? Yeah. Wonderful. So that's the MST3K that we know and love. Woo! 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 <laughs> Yay! Fantastic. Uh, sadly, of course, MST3K came to a close, uh, and the group sort of split into, uh, into two different uh, comedy troops, one creating a cinematic Titanic, and uh, that'd be Joel and the gang, uh, Frank and Trace, uh, Mary Jo, uh, and then the other group uh, started Rift Tracks. The cinematic Titanic, I think, was from 2007 to 2013. And then uh, there was Rift Tracks. Have you guys uh, seen Rift Tracks? Yeah, yeah, it's great. So you go there, and they've just now done uh, more Rift Tracks than they ever did MST3K. So they've, uh, there's a bulk there. Uh, including us. Yes. And we're there. Uh, Mike and, uh, and, of course, Kevin and Bill are all over there at Rift Tracks. And then there's an iRiff section. Uh, there at Rift Tracks, and we're part of the iRiff section, which is, which is really a, a joy. Yay! The, the, the end. Um, so when we started uh, uh, working on our show, one of the things that we found that we kind of have three different examples of uh, ways of movie riffing that we felt weren't really being taken advantage of. So we wanted to share those with you briefly. We brought a couple of examples real quick. Uh, not full shorts like that, just like minute clips. But we wanted to show you kind of open your mind to like different different style, like not styles, but just different methods. Uh, and the first one Dylan's going to talk about here. Yeah, so one of the things that we do differently is we riff in character. We have characters on our show who have a growth, a plot, they follow along. Each, series, uh, each season they grow a little bit, so you get to learn their personalities and whatnot, as opposed to, like these guys, we're stand-up comedians, which is fantastic, but we feel we add a little bit more having the different character identities into the riffs. Like if you, we have one character named Pete, who you know is gonna always say something off the wall and usually very funny in the moment, or like in our show, if characters are fighting about who ate the last of the ice cream, the argument then becomes of the riffing. Wow, that guy's a jerk. You know, well, he replaced the ice cream unlike you. Things like that. So we got a minute of that as far as being in character. I don't think I've ever seen a full episode of Dragon. What are you talking about? You watched like three of them last year. Oh, my gosh. He's still singing. I wonder what he's really doing. Okay, that's enough. He can't go on. Oh, maybe I should have married Shirley. Are you done? Even though the doctor is constantly trying, at least I can find his dinghy. Okay, you're done now. Maybe he can get the high note because he doesn't have a dinghy. Seriously, we used to be able to make people stop. That's because she had a dinghy. Wait, we're talking about the little rowboat still, right? That's what we're talking about. I'll work. Won't remember him. He just wants some more. I'll work to show him that we met him to get away from the show. So we have all these strange freaky dudes, but one of those names is Oliver? What is going on? Wait for it, wait for it. Have we ever had a film just freeze before? How's this happening? Why didn't they just edit this part out? Utah. I don't really see the possibility. I, I don't think it's the state of Utah or an orange. 
So what you're saying is we treated a music box going forward. Nope. <laughs> character, um, as we all would if we were sitting in our living rooms with people we know and love, we know we know argue a lot. Um, at least us, we argue all the time. We're all around the road. Um, so uh, one of the other things that we do, which they did do in MST3K uh, to some extent, uh, but we've sort of taken it nuclear, is uh, doing celebrity impressions, uh, especially if that character is in the movie. Uh, we love to do impressions of, of uh, different celebrities. Uh, the only one I can do is Don Knotts. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot here, so. No, it's really good here to be here in Madison, you know? I'm sorry, I didn't really die. It was all a hoax. Um, so we do that. Yeah. Oh, don't flatter me. I'll go, do, I'll go on, on all kinds of things. Yeah, so keep doing it. <laughs> oh, look, here we are, guys. Okay, um, so uh, uh, here's some celebrity impressions. One of the actors on our show does a zillion impressions. Uh, so uh, check this out uh, about a minute of, of the impression. Okay. Oh, cool, you guys are here. I can't wait to get this party started. <laughs> you guys are here. Yeah, you guys are here. You guys are here. If you ever find yourself in a bar, in a bar, don't play with the ping pong machine. That's what you're talking about. Ha! I'm here! I remember when I was an angel. <laughs> well, it beats sleeping in a burning bed, I guess. Oh, thank you. He picks the other guy that goes around like a little chick trying to kill him. I'm going to build the old bed. It's a three flusher. So we'll use something like a car crash, uh, or, uh, or crickets, of course, or um, cat in the dryer. Cat in the dryer is one of my favorites of all time. Um, and even though it's not, it just doesn't. <laughs> also, uh, what's the other one that we do? Oh, of course, uh, whoopee cushions, we'll use those often. Oh. And then another thing we do, too, is whenever spe somebody's speaking a foreign language or uh, mumbling, we'll, uh, we'll put in subtitles on that. Yeah, we love doing subtitles. Okay, so here's uh, here's subtitles and sound effects. Let's do, what we're going to do is a live rip-off 
with members of the audience. So we need two volunteers to come up and rip a movie. So we got one right there and one right in the front. Sure. Before we get started, I'm not going to tell you once again anything about this uh, short except for the title. Now, I will tell you guys the length so you don't think you'll be up here for like, you know, an hour. So uh, it's three minutes long, so don't worry, it's not the end of the world, okay? Right. So uh, it's three minutes, and the title of the short is Consuming Women. <laughs> All right, and with that, and we're going to work with you. <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay. <laughs> And with that, here we go. All right, what is this? So it's, uh, when the acid kicks in by Coronet. Oh, so I had one of these when I was three. Look at another <laughs> way. If this is counselorship, then where is your ambassador? <laughs> Isn't she the one from Martha Tax? One is Saint Margaret. No! Can't tell if she's flirting with us or deciding we'll taste good with ketchup. The new Rorschach test collection! <laughs> Mom! She smothered us! <laughs> it was quicker than I thought, Dad. What's a short short? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, we consumed her! <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is single and fun loving. She's having an anxiety attack, so we've added music to make it more enjoyable. Watch as she freaks out on the dance floor, literally. She's engaged. To a faceless man that will crush her dreams. <laughs> Wait, wasn't she single a second ago? Wow, this relationship's moving fast. That's what go-go dancing leads to. She is newly married. Hey, slow down a little. Yeah. <laughs> Can't the sound I haven't eaten for two weeks to fix this dress. <laughs> I repeat to no, no, this is me anymore. <laughs> this dictionary isn't as thrilling as it used to be. <laughs> Where's my large print? She has no children. Thank God, she'd be a terrible parent. <laughs> she has one child. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what was that? I didn't know you were here. We'll name you Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Lollipops are for her mothers. After you. She has a sister. That boy has a sister named Clay Aiken. <laughs> she has oh. many children. Oh, man, maybe you should stop. John and Kate plus 33. Why do I love going to dance so much? <laughs> oh, you're so precious. Not her own grandchildren. <laughs> Give John Lennon those glasses back. He may be exclusively a homemaker. I should hope this beat 3,000 children. <laughs> Dear resume. Oh, that's not where I am. Horrible at this. Damn, Carpenter Tunnel never had a job. Me and... Man, I can really use some sleeves right now. She works in an office. Mm-hmm. Two hundred dollars on Money Boy in the third. Uh, to win. You got it. Now, keeping that bet for myself. Back to my large script. <laughs> oh, I put this right. You and your balls. <laughs> I'm miserable. in community affairs. By blinding. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna throw the gavel at the next person who talks. Oh! You can see the cardio ball in an open warehouse of sport. I thought we were consuming women, not bowling balls. She travels. Tattoo! <laughs> Just not today. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, Wow, the merch at Comic Con is getting expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, give him a hand. Some information here today. Woohoo! Um, so, woo! Um, so, and how? 